Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens, currently inked this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have an Anoto Magna Carta. We have an Anoto Rosetta Stone. We have a Tatcha Miabi Winter's Breath. We have a Tatcha Miabi Empress Winter's Breath. We have a Banu Euphoria in the Bourbon. We have a Jinhao X159. We have a Tatcha Miabi Earth. We have a Scribo Phil in the Verde Prato. We have a Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Malay. And we have a Visconti Camelot. So I think let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail. So this pen is the Anoto Magna Carta. Uh, it has a very, very lovely uh, coin finial there on uh, the cap. Um, and that's on the cap finial. Um, so it's in gold. Uh, you have the silver and then a gold uh, bronze colored clip. And then you have uh, parts of the Magna Carta that is inscribed into what is actually a solid silver or AG925 sterling silver. Uh, but it's anodized. So you have all of this anodized and then inscribed and likewise into the body there as well with a coat of arms. Uh, a huge amount of detail there that goes into this pen. Absolutely exquisite. Uh, the cap band, uh, it has an aged sort of bronze look, although it is gold. And it says Magna, Carta and then 1215. So, so this is a, a solid silver pen weighing around 90 to 95 grams in weight. So this is a very heavy pen. Uh, it is a cartridge converter pen. Comes with a silver section there, uh, a chromed section. A number seven size Anoto nib. It's a fine nib. Uh, Anoto gold nibs are actually made by Bok. Uh, probably why I like them actually, how they write, because... I like Visconti nibs, and they're made by Bock as well. Um, it is a cartridge converter, and you can see that this cartridge converter is out. So uh, I will need to probably re-ink this one up. Uh, I may actually do it after this currently inked. We'll see if we can get through it. If we can get through it, we will. If not, I may have to re-ink it up. Um, very nice pen, uh, very long pen. Uh, the cap's not designed to post, though. Uh, but it is a long pen, so you won't really uh, find it's a short pen in with the need to post the cap. So that's the Anoto Magna Carta. I also have the Anoto Rosetta Stone. Now, one might be fooled into thinking it's it's an identical pen. It's not. So you have this yellow gold coloured clip. This clip's a little bit more on the chunky side, I would say. Um, there is no coin finial here on the cap, but it does say Anoto and it does say England. And then you have the standard Anoto clip. Again, solid silver pen, about 95 grams in weight uh, and solid silver or AG95 sterling silver, uh, anodized and then these hieroglyphs engraved into the pen. And... These are really, really exquisite, very high level of detail. Uh, you can also see the cap band, yellow gold, and it says the Rosetta Stone. Uh, and then you have the hieroglyphs uh, also on the body of the pen. And you can just see those there. Really, really a heavy amount of detail. Uh, this really, really is a beautiful pen. Uh, if I remove the cap, uh, silver section, chrome section, number seven size Anoto, again, a fine nib, uh, made by Bok as well. Uh, and this is a cartridge converter uh, as well. And I do have a, a love-hate relationship with cartridge converters I've mentioned many times. Uh, I am a writer. I am a user of pens. So I like to have long writing sessions. So I will write number of letters, probably four or five letters a week. And I'll typically write one page uh, with each uh, pen that I have inked up. 
uh, and I'll probably write four, five, six, maybe eight pages, depending on the letter. Um, so I do find that a cartridge converter, 0.7 milliliters of ink, will run out fairly quickly, and I will have to re-ink it up. So uh, that's the hate part of the relationship. The love part is that it's very easy to clean. There's very little that can go wrong uh, compared to a piston or a power vac filling pen. So uh, with that respect, if the cartridge converter goes wrong, you can still put a cartridge in. You could go and buy another converter, probably for five pound uh, euros or dollars, and uh, it will be like new again. So, so that's the, the love hate relationship that I do have with converters. Um, I I prefer a pen that holds uh, around one one point two milliliters of ink minimum, which is a, a piston uh, filling pen. Uh, I uh, prefer a uh, a power vac that holds if it's a single reservoir one and a half milliliters if it's a double reservoir two and a half milliliters of ink however um and that will get me through a lot of writing however um those mechanisms can break and then you have a pen that's useless uh, unless you can get it repaired so that's where the love hate relationship comes from it uh, as much as i like power vacs and i like piston filling pens i have had a number that have uh, broken or needed uh, repair so uh, with that I, I am typically liking converters more the next pen uh, I have inked up is the Tatia Miyabi Winter's Breath and I do love this pen uh, this was a I think it was a birthday pen that I bought and I, I love it to bits uh, I missed out a number of years prior on the original Tatia Winter's Breath which was a rectangular pen, not a cigar-shaped pen, and it was thinner, and it had a number five size nib. The reason why I missed out on it, I had the chance many times to buy it, but I typically am not into number five size nibs. I like number six or number eight. So I just um denard, um denard, and then it all, they all sold out. So I lost my chance in buying one new. Uh, I have seen... Uh, if, if you're interested in one of those, I have seen in the past few years, Sarge has one on his table. I don't know if he still has it or not, um, but uh, he did have one, uh, I think not cheap, but then they weren't that cheap. I think they sold for around about 1300 uh, brand new, discounted to about 1150 Um This one I like, so when it came out, I decided I was going to pounce and get one. Uh, I got this from Bryant at Chastity Luxuries. It's crushed quail's eggs, just like the original one, uh, with uh, abalone um, stripes or strips there. Uh, and it's all glued onto a, the pen and then Yerushi lacquered over the top. But this is a beautiful work of art. And I have to say, I'm in awe with it. Um, the only thing uh, I was disappointed at, um, and I knew this when I bought it, is that it would have a number six size nib. But a number six size is better than a number five size in, in my books because uh, I like the larger nibs. But I would have preferred a number eight size. Um, it is a cartridge converter. It's an ebonite pen with the Mackie with the Yerushi. Um, the because it's a Tatcha pen, Tatcha make the or Sailor make the nibs for Tatcha, uh, but they are eighteen karat gold nibs. Uh, but it is a Sailor made nib. Um, you can post the cap on the original. Uh, my abbeys um you can't really on the uh empress editions uh it does have a spring-loaded clutch in a cap mechanism so you have to push it in and twist you can't just twist but i do like that a lot however i did still want a number eight size nib a king of pen size nib and i think whether or not it was myself or it was a number of other people um sort of mentioning it on reviews and that uh, about six months after i bought this they did come out with the empress model which was the king of pen size nib and i vowed that i wouldn't buy it uh it was uh, this original Miami winter's breath was way too much i did get a good price on it but this one is about another 700 on top and i vowed that i would never buy it um some subtle differences You've got a ruthenium uh, clip versus a silver clip or rhodium clip. Uh, you also have Yerushi, the egg, the quail's eggs crushed there. 
the pen's slightly longer, it's slightly girthier in terms of the width, uh, and it also has the uh, number eight size king of pen nib that, again, beautiful pen, uh, really, really nice. I like uh, the crushed quail's eggs. I like the uh, ab abalone there, uh, the Varden strips. Uh, beautiful, beautiful way that they've done this pen. Uh, it kind of reminds me of um, the series Winter is Coming, um, the Game of Thrones, uh, and I think that's also another reason why I wanted it. Um, I, I would love, actually, the uh, Montegrappa Game of Thrones pen, but again, that is uh, way out of my price league. At least at the moment, never say never. Um, one may come along at a good price. Somebody may come along and want to trade for a pen that I'm happy to trade with. Who knows? Uh, but at the moment, it is out of my price range. But I'm glad I picked this one up. I picked this one up secondhand. Uh, it is a number eight size King of Pen nib there, made by Tatcher. It's not a 21 karat gold nib like the Sailor nib, so it's an 18 karat gold. Um, but again, it does have the Sailor converter there. Uh, I know some people have. Uh, Love-hate relationships with Sailor converters, uh, always breaking. I've never had one break. The section is quite girthy uh, and a little bit shorter, but I do like it. And as I mentioned, um, you can post uh, the cap here, but as you saw there, it will fall off. It, it's not designed to do so. So uh, for me, and, and likewise, it's actually a decent size in my hand. So I wouldn't normally post that cap. Um, it is Yurushi coated. I don't know how many layers. Uh, it's like it, it shouldn't really scratch or chip uh, or chip off easily uh, some of that eggshell or the Raden strips. However, though, it is glued onto the pen, so it, there is always a possibility. Uh, so you probably don't want to drop it too much. You probably don't want to be trying to post your caps too much either because that will increase the risk uh, potentially of uh, even though Yurushi lacquer is a very hard lacquer you never know how many layers there are and whether or not it might wear or chip over time now a lot of people say to me oh yeah but Dave you only have expensive pens where are all your cheap pens well maybe this isn't a cheap pen but it's not an expensive pen uh, this is as you can see there a Banu and it's the Euphoria and it's the Bourbon and I love this pen. I do like glitter in a pen. Um, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful colour. It reminds me of bourbon or whiskey. Uh, I kind of wish they had labelled this the whiskey pen. Uh, come on, Banu, make a whiskey pen. If you're watching this, make a whiskey pen, please. Um, but I do like this a lot. And I, I kind of call this a whiskey pen. Or when I say bourbon, I know it's whiskey. Um it is a cartridge converter pen um, and has a very long section, quite a thin section, but I still find it comfortable. Uh, has a number six size uh, Schmidt nib. It's a fine nib there. Um, quite a long pen. Does taper down a lot, though, uh, to the end. You can post the cap. It's not back weighted. Uh, although, again, I'm not a cap poster. It's quite long enough as it is for me, but I know some of you do prefer to post your caps. So that one is inked up uh, with me this week as well. Now, okay, talking about cheap pens, yes, that comes in around about £100 or so, euros or dollars. Um, it may not be the cheapest of pens, I know, I get that. This one, however, though, is cheap. Uh, this comes in at around about £6 or €6 Euros or $6. Uh, it is a Jin Hao that you can see there. And it is the X159. Now, uh, about four or five years ago, or five, six years ago, Jin Hao made a metal X159, which I think I still have somewhere. And uh, very different. This is basically a remake of the 159, but in um, they did uh, this in a metal bodied pen, like a lot of the Jin Hao X450s and that. But this is a just a resin pen. But this comes with, uh, again, uh, it, it's a Mont Blanc 149 clone. But it comes with a number 8 size still uh, Jin Hao nib. This is a fine nib. I did actually pick up six of these. Uh, three in this sort of 
uh, almost begonia red, um, uh, and then uh, six in bl uh, three in blue, so six in total. Uh, they were all fine nibs. I couldn't get any medium or broad, unfortunately. Um, and these are cartridge converter pens, so uh, you'll see there, cartridge converter. But I have to say, I'm quite impressed by these. For six pound, six euros, six dollars, this is actually a pretty good pen. Uh, the cap will post quite deeply and securely as well. Uh, it is a number eight size still nib. You don't really see any number eight size still nibs, or very rarely. Um, so for me, that that's interesting. Uh, so this one was actually quite uh, quite nice right out of the box. Some of them are not. Uh, I have had to tune them. But then again, you're, you're paying for essentially a six uh, pound euros or dollar uh, pen. So don't expect much from it, honestly. It, it's... If it writes scratchy, it writes scratchy. Uh, a couple, well, maybe five or six figure eights uh, writing inked up on a 1200 grit micro mesh. If it is very scratchy and catchy um, and cutting paper, drop down to 8000 grit, do five or six figure of eight inked up. Uh, and then um, if it doesn't catch the paper now, then go back to 12,000 grit and do the same, six to eight. Um, if you write cursive uh, and you still find it a little bit scratchy, the nib, uh, write with the pen inked up, write mango chutney on 12,000 grit. You might have to do it on 8,000 first, do it on, then on, uh, lastly on 12,000 grit, and you should actually get a really nice cursively writing nib. Don't do too many figure of eights, too much writing on micro mesh because you could flat spot the nib uh, and make it hard start or skip a little bit more certainly more on glossy paper like uh, rhodia um, optic optic uh, oxford optic or something along those lines the next pen inked up is the uh, tatcher and my abbey earth and yes this is an ebonite pen again uh, yes it is a, a yurushi pen it's an akatamanuri uh, color a beautiful uh, sort of deep red, um, beautiful pen. I do like it a lot. Uh, I was able to pick this up from Chris at Truffet. Uh, I hadn't actually bought some pens from Chris for quite some time. Uh, I saw he had this game. This was second hand. Uh, I used to sort of my thought pattern on pens. When I started out collecting, I only wanted new pens. I didn't want vintage because they were used. I didn't want used pens because they were used. Uh, five, six years later, I'm actually, I don't mind having a used pen. If providing it, it there's nothing wrong with it, providing it, it looks good, it looks new. I actually forget that it's a used pen and it actually feels like a new pen. So I'm glad I was able to pick this one up. Uh, again, beautiful, beautiful red Akatamanuri finish there. Um, you do have, uh, the artist signature there, and uh, number three of 100. Only 100 of these made in Akatamanuri. Uh, this does have, like the original uh, Tatcha Miyabi uh, Winter's Breath, has a number six size nib, not a number eight size nib. Uh, this is a hard medium fine, and I do find it a hard medium fine. Uh, I can post the cap, um, and it will post. Um, you do have to be careful, though, because... These caps are spring-loaded, uh, the inner cap. So if you look at that, just pushing that on, it, it is springy. So you do have to be a little bit careful uh, in posting that. You would have to post them a little bit more harder. Um, and although Yurushi is quite a hard surface, uh, I probably wouldn't want to um, risk scratching that. So, um, But that one I have inked up this week as well. The next pen I have inked up is a Scribo fill in the Verde Prato. I have a number of these Scribo fills. Uh, I know some people that have many, many more than I do. Um, I have quite a few. I think I have about six, seven, or eight of those. I've got, I've got the blue black, the blue gray. Uh, I've got this. I've got the Verde Bosco. So I've got four in the fill, and then I've got uh, the the Scribo 2 in the green, the red, and then uh, a Scribo 3 in the blue. So I've got seven, I think, of these. Um, but only four in, in the, the fill model. I prefer the fill model. I do like this. It is a piston filling pen. 
Uh, it's got a ruthenium uh, trim on this one. Uh, ruthenium nib, coloured nib there. Uh, it's a 14 karat gold extra flex nib uh, from Scribo. Uh, these are the original extra flex nibs that Omas used to use. So uh, they are very nice, very bouncy. Uh, you can't really post the cap. It's not designed to do so. But it is quite long in uh, my hand there. So I don't feel the need to post. I only honestly feel the need to post if if the pen is too short for me because a short pen will give me hand cramp so at that point if it's a short pen and I'm, when i say short probably 120 uh millimeters in length so one point so you, you, you're gonna it's gonna be a small pen uh typically an oversize it's probably about one 128 millimeters 130 so one 22 is quite short in millimeters uh, or 12.2 centimeters. So at that point, I would probably post the cap. But anything above 125 millimeters, uh, 128, typically I will not post the caps on. The next pen I have inked up is the Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Molay. Beautiful uh, uh, Last Templar Knight's pen. Uh, when I saw this pen, I lusted after it and I wanted it. Couldn't get it. Uh, well, I could. I could have got one without the box and papers, the ring and the the envelope slicer or paper cutter. But I decided not to. And uh, eventually I managed to pick one up new from Marco at Novelli. Um, he helped me secure one through, uh, um, through Novelli uh, from Visconti. And uh, I now have that in my collection so uh, hats off to uh, Marco at Novelli uh, he wanted to sell me a pen and I said to him at the time I don't think you have anything I, I want and he said okay well tell me what you do want and I told him and he said ah okay let me see what I can do and a couple of weeks later he came back with one so be careful on what you wish for because you might end up paying a lot of money and I did, but I'm grateful for Marco and Novelli. And I'm grateful that I was able to pick this pen up when I did, because it was a growl pen for me. And I really wanted it. It's got exquisite sort of chainmail design. It really looks like a knight wearing armor. Um, the power vac knob is an interesting one. It's got a chalice there. Uh, it, it's, it's a really, really well themed pen. If you want a themed pen, this is the pen to get beautiful pen um i like the whiteness on it um that the cream white uh it's got a number six size uh, uh visconti nib there it's a 23 cap palladium medium nib does have a white feed i'm not such a fan of the white feed i'm not such a fan of, of white sections because they can stain over time um but i also understand that having this with black instead of white wouldn't have looked anywhere near as nice so um could they have done a different color yes they could have done a gray it wouldn't have stood out as nice but yes they, they could have done a gray i think um a gray probably a, a lighter or dark mid mid gray probably would have been nice and then the last one i have inked up is another themed pen this is the visconti camelot and you've got a sword as the clip there and you can see that clip opening and shutting Again, sort of another sort of like chalice hat there. Um, you've got this beautiful um, chainmail there, and these are proper chainmail links. Uh, absolutely a beautiful pen. I honestly hadn't seen this pen at all until a friend sent me photos uh, when they visited the Toronto Pen Show, and they uh, said, is there anything you want? And I said, hey, I really wouldn't mind that one. So they managed to buy it for me and then ship it to me, which was great. Uh, I do like this pen a lot. I love the writing experience as well. Um, this is a number older um, Visconti number no. six, 18 karat gold nib with a medium nib. Beautiful writer. It is a power vac. It's a single reservoir. The section is very long, uh, a little bit on the thinner side for me. However, I love how this writes, uh, and I do do love writing with this pen. So uh, I have the Visconti Camelot inked up with me this week as well. So that's my currently ink pens for this week. I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So the first pen inked up this week is the Anoto Magna Carta. 
So I think let's go and do an ink swatch first. So we're doing an ink swatch. Now, this one is running on fumes. So uh, I've written with this a lot over the last few weeks. So I'm going to probably have to ink it back up very shortly. Uh, I'm hoping I can get through this writing sample first. Uh, it's the Anoto Magna Carta. Uh, and it is a uh, fine and it's an 18 cat gold uh, Bok nib. And then the ink in here is Diamine Earl Grey. Now, I, I say uh, I will ink it back up. Um, I could put it back into storage, but I do like writing with this pen. So uh, I I don't know. I'm a little bit torn. Uh, I would like to. Uh, I've got a few more notes I've been writing with as well. So I don't know. I'll have to think about this one. The next pen is the Anoto Rosetta Stone. So again, we'll do an, an ink swatch here. Now this one does have more ink in it and you'll see there that uh, this is uh, quite a nice uh, colored ink. Um, it's, I think I would prefer to have um, Diamine Old Grey in this pen though. So this is the Anoto uh, Rosetta Stone. Uh, I do find this a little bit more on the fine graphite color uh, type color and I'm not that enamored with that color. So this is a, a fine 18 cat gold nib again. Uh, and then the ink in here is um, a dominance, uh, is, it, is it dominant industries? Let me double check that actually. Now it's actually a diamine, uh, strangely enough. It's a diamine, uh, diamine. Uh, Colt Pens uh, Summer Edition and it is called uh, Grey Skies No More uh, it is a nice ink and you can see it here it really does look like a graphite pencil um, I do I'm, I don't have um, the diamond graphite but from what I've seen online of swatches, it looks very similar. The next pen inked up is a Touch of Miami Winter's Breath. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And beautiful blue color, uh, almost turquoisey, I would say. So this is the uh, Tatcha Miami. Winter's Breath. Uh, and it's a, a broad nib. Uh, I wanted a broad nib because I thought I wouldn't like the medium nib as much. Uh, I do have medium King of Pen nibs and I just, uh, I didn't like them as much. I do like them now though. Um, so it's a broad uh, and it's an 18 count gold nib. And then uh, the ink in here is a uh, Pelican. Edelstein, Topaz. But that uh, used to be my go-to uh, turquoise colour ink. I say turquoise it's it's not quite turquoise. It's, I would say it's a little bit in the middle between a blue and a turquoise. The next pen inked up is the Tatcha Miami Empress Winter's Breath. So this does have a, a king of pen size nib, a number eight size nib. And the reason why I said I didn't think I would like a medium nib on this one is that Tatcha nibs are made by Sailor. Uh, so Sailor being an Asian uh, country, typically uh, if you had a medium, it would write more like a fine. If you had a broad, it would write more like a medium Western style. So this is uh, the uh, Tatcha uh, my Abbey, and it's the Empress uh, Winter's Breath, uh, and it's a medium, uh, and it's an 18 count gold nib. Even though it's a King of Pen nib, it's still an 18 count gold nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is a uh, Diamine 
ultra green. Um, but uh, that uh, is is a nice writing pen. Uh, will I change the ink in there? Maybe I will. I'd like maybe a little bit more of a lubricated uh, ink in there. Um, I'm just not sure of many lubricated mid green inks. Uh, I'll have to have a think about that one. The next pen inked up is the Banu Euphoria in the Bourbon. So we'll do an ink swatch. And when I say lubricated this, uh, it's not a very wet nib um, uh, or ink, but it, it's a fairly well lubricated ink, I find, in most pens. So this is the uh, Banu Euphoria. And it's the uh, Bourbon. And it is a fine. Uh, it is a steel nib. It's a Schmidt nib. And then the ink in here is a uh, diamine ochre, which uh, I do find is quite a moderately well lubricated ink. So when I say lubricated, it tends to be quite wet. The next pen is a Jinhao X159. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, I was at one point going to ink this up with the same colored ink, but I decided against it. And I decided there was an ink that I really didn't use a lot of. And I kind of wanted to get rid of it because, because of that. And it frees up a bottle of ink. Um, so I inked this one up. And actually, I've started to like the ink now. I don't think it's an, as much to get a second bottle of it, but I'm starting to, to, to warm up to this ink. So this is the uh, Jinhao X159. Um, it is a fine nib, and it's a, a still uh, Jinhao nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Diamine, and it's Oxblood. And I don't know why. I, I don't want to say dislike the ink. It's not that I dislike it. It's just that it's not an ink that I will normally go for. And... I think it may be because it has the name blood in it. Maybe because it has the name ox. Um, I think of an ox more like a cow uh, in the UK. So I don't know. It's, it's just strange. But it's just uh, an ink that I don't gravitate towards a lot. The next pen inked up is the Tatcha Miami Earth. Now this is, uh, if you remember, it's, it's a hard fine medium fine nib so this is a stiff nib and i do still like this ink although i don't think the ink really matches the color the dark color the akatamanuri color of uh the pen so i will probably change it at some point but this is a tatcha Miami earth in akatamanuri and I'd have to say that definitely this is uh, a hard nib. It's not bouncy in any way. Uh, so it is a hard, medium, fine, uh, and it is an 18 cat gold nib made by Sailor for Tatcha. And then the ink in here is Diamine Passion Red, which I think would be a really beautiful ink in a broad nib or a stub nib uh maybe not so in a medium fine or a hard medium fine nib the next pen inked up is a scribo fill in the verde prato so we'll do an ink swatch and i love how this nib writes i've got to write with scribo nibs more so this is the uh, Scribo fill in the Verde Prato. Uh, and it's a medium and it's a 14 cat gold extra flex nib. And uh, the ink in here is uh, Ackerman Dutch Masters. And it is uh, Van Hoyersum's Van Hoyersum's. 
sap grown. But beautiful, beautiful, light green, um, slightly olive, I would say. Uh, but it's it's a green that I do like quite a bit. The next pen is the Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Malay. So we'll do an ink swatch. And when I got this pen, it was I, I didn't have to think about what ink to put in here for very long. Um, I wanted a noble ink, and I think this is noble enough for the pen. So this is the Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Malay. And it's a medium and it is um, a 23 cat palladium nib and then the ink in here is diamine earl grey um earl grey is an institution i love earl grey tea so and it is an earl as well so that's why i think it's a it's noble it's a noble inking for this pen uh i i would like to see diamine uh, or another ink manufacturer but preferably diamine come up with a range of different inks based on Things like Templars or other historical moments uh, and have a range of inks. Uh, I think that would be a really good idea. The last pen inked up is the Visconti Camelot. So we'll do an ink swatch. And I have inked this up with Diamine Earl Grey in the past. I typically prefer, though, that this is inked up with this colour. Um, so this is the uh, Visconti Camelot. Uh, it's a, mar a medium uh, and it's an 18 uh, carat gold old style nib from Visconti. And then the ink in here is Mont Blanc, lavender, purple. Now, typically, lavender purple is not one of my go-to purple inks for what I recognise as purple uh, i prefer more of a almost a blurple a darker purple um however this one does dry a little bit darker so uh and i do like it inked up and paired in that pen so i have that one inked up this week as well so i think let's take another look at these pens inked up one more time so we have an anoto magna carta in a fine 18 karat gold nib inked up with diamine earl grey we have an Anoto Rosetta Stone in a fine 18 karat gold nib inked up with the Diamine Colt Pen Summer Edition Grey Skies No More. We have a Tatcha Miami Winter's Breath in a broad 18 karat gold nib inked up with Pelican Edelstein Topaz. We have a Tatcha Miami Winter's or Emperor Winter's Breath in a medium 18 karat gold nib inked up with Diamine Ultra Green. We have a Banu Euphoria Bourbon in a fine steel nib inked up with Diamine Ochre. We have a Jinhao X159 in a fine steel nib inked up with Diamine Oxblood. We have a Tatcha Miami Earth in Akatamanuri in a hard medium fine 18 karat gold nib inked up with Diamine Passion Red. We have a Scribo Phil in the Verde Prato in a medium 14 karat gold nib inked up with Ackermann Dutch Masters Van Hoysen's Sap Grown. We have a Visconti Last Templar Jacques de Molay in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Diamine Earl Grey. And then we have a Visconti Camelot in a medium 18 cap gold nib inked up with Mont Blanc Lavender Purple. So there you have it. That's my uh, currently ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.